thank you once again for tuning in. Today I have a special guest with me. This is like big on all sorts of different levels, man. This is like a real special interview. And we're really, I'm really grateful to have one of my mentors on here. Um, you know, this gentleman that's with us is a New York native, a loyal New York Jets fan, as hard as that is to be, you know, as, as tough as it is to be a fan of that team. This guy's been with him through thick and thin. Um, he's a leader and a mentor to many, including myself. Um, this gentleman is well known in the world of parking and transportation. And, you know, he's been working in the industry for 20 plus years now. Former CEO of a company called City Park, former senior director of transportation, uh, for the Golden State Warriors and former director of operations for a company formerly known as Impart. I want to introduce you all to a good friend of mine, a mentor, somebody that I've learned a lot from, Mr. Michael Rusigno. Thank you for joining us, Mike. Hey, no problem, Chris. Thanks for the intro. And when you speak about jet fans and say thick or thin, I would have to say we no longer have the thick part. And are focused mainly on the thin. Hey, you guys, hey, to be fair, you guys awesome. have come a long way. There's some players on there that I like. I don't know how you feel about Darnold, but uh, I like him, man. I feel like he's a, he's a pretty good player. But wait, did you guys, hold on, did you guys trade him before we even go further? I don't know. I don't know if we traded him yet. The one that broke my heart was the, the secondary oh, guy that we yeah, sent Jamal to Adams? the Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, that was, that was tough. Yeah. But he was... Yeah. He didn't have that great of a year for Seattle, man. So I wouldn't be so mad. Yeah. And yeah, for some just, odd reason, tough. Deshaun Watson, one of his preferred de destinations is to go to your team. I don't know why. I'm kind of hoping he, you know, decides to come to the Niners, but that's we'll leave that story for another day. But uh, Mike, man, why don't you, why don't you uh, do yeah. us a favor, man, and just like catch us up with how you're holding up through this pandemic, man? Uh. Good, good. I, I think, you know, the first, I would say, you know, the first couple months, you know, it was kind of fun not having to drive to work and working from home and, you know, eating eating dinner with the family every night. No, you know, not a lot of traffic and working out when you want to work out and setting your schedule. So if you, you know, if you want to take the dog out at lunchtime, you can. And so, you know, I would say the first couple months, it was, you know, it kind of was, uh, it's kind of fun. It was different. I never was a work from home person my whole life. And, uh, and as it went on longer, I would say the next few months, I really started to understand that you have to be disciplined. Like you, if you're going to work from home, you have to figure out what your plan is the day before, similar, just like to your regular job, like you're going in, you get up at the same time, you take a shower, you get dressed, you know, it's not something where you work from home and you just want to sit in your sweatpants for eight months and, you know, shower every other day or not shave. Uh, that really has a lot to do with your, your mental state once Agreed. you get, once you get going, you know? Yeah. It's a, it's, it's an adjustment for some. And I can imagine, I mean, for me, myself personally, it's been an adjustment and, uh, but it's also been a, a period where I've been able to slow down a whole lot more and just kind of learn to be grateful for having a lot of different things in my life. And I found time to work on special projects, one being creating this podcast and, you know, a lot of really good silver lining I, I found through this whole time. And, you know, it's, you made it, you made a really great point about just kind of sticking to a routine because it, it, you could really fall into that trap of just getting comfortable. Right. Oh yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I, I think, and, and you know, in, in hindsight, on March, I think it was March 15th, they made the announcement that we would be working from home. And, but there was, nobody knew how long it was going to go. Like you thought it was 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. If you told me on March 16th that on March 1st of 2021, I would still be in a remote work classification, maybe I would have learned Italian. Maybe I would have learned this. Maybe I would have done some more educational things or bettered myself through a, a bunch of other, you know, mediums because I knew I had the time. And now when I look back, it's like, okay, what did I, did I, where did I better myself during this, this influx of non-commuting, right? Because when you don't drive to work and you're not at the office, your, your life gets infused with one of the most 
important things, which is time. And so you get three or four hours of your life back. And what are you going to do in those three or four hours? Because driving, you didn't have them before, you know, but now you've got them. And what are you doing with them? Mm. You know, are you putting the effort into your uh, relationships? Are you putting the effort into spending more time with your children? Are you, you know, adopting a pet from the local, you know, pet adoption? You know, like, what are you doing with that influx of time? You know, Absolutely. and now when you look back on a year, what, what can you relate to that? Absolutely. I, I think that's really important. So, and I think that, um, you know, it, it's a it's a, a crazy time. It's a very unique time. This is obviously um, the largest pandemic we've had in over 100 years. We all know everything about the negative side of this pandemic. And um, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that have kind of experienced some effects that really, you know, um, made their life even more difficult, or at least it seems that way. And, you know, being displaced from jobs is, is something that like some people have struggled with and stuff like that. So like, what would you recommend to like, you know, people out there that are in situations like that, man? Because you you come from a lot of experience and just, you know, um, you again, you're a mentor to so many people. So your work carries a lot of weight with me, man. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, there it's very easy for people to say, hey, don't stress over things you don't control. Like if you don't control them, you can't stress over them. But I can tell you that, you know, in the beginning of January, I made it through three or four rounds of layoffs, you know, with my job. And then I was in the very last group that didn't make it. Mm -hmm. But there was not a day during that pandemic that I did not drive to work with the anxiety of, is today the day? Mm -hmm. No matter how much assurances you get from people or whatever, there is a, a level of anxiety that comes during this pandemic when you're in a business that's impacted so massively, like sports venues and concerts and restaurants and bartenders. And yeah, you know, you're working from home, but are you really doing your primary function, right? And so you sit there and you have this anxiety every day that it's almost like when they finally say to you, hey, today is your last day or you're going to finish, you actually feel a sense of relief that that anxiety has now left. Now, you may have new anxiety around like, how am I going to pay rent or what am I going to do and all of this kind of stuff. But once you start to compartmentalize those sections of your life and you start to think about it, you know, you kind of have to think, and I, I use this reference with, with younger people as I'm talking, you know, I tell them, hey, you know, if you watch Tom Hanks in Castaway, you know, he was very active in getting rescued from the island, no matter how long he was there, right. whether it was creating fire, making a raft, and all of these things where he was an active player in changing his situation. And really, you know, and I know I mentioned this to you before in the past is, you know, when you're looking for a job, that becomes a job. You know, if you're not going to an office or not working remotely, you still should try to get up at a regular time like you normally do, take a shower, look on, you know, spend a number of time sending out letters and everything like that. I mean, you know, Wayne, Wayne Gretzky, I think, said it best when he said that you miss 100% of the, of the shots you never take, right? So people said to me, hey, Mike, what, what did you do? Like, you're, you're not a young person, obviously, you know, 25 years in the business, I got nothing to hide. I mean, I'm 56 years old, and all of a sudden looking for a job. And, you know, I never haven't looked for a job since I was in my like, you know, 19 years old. You know, I may have gone from job to job, but there never was a time where I woke up in the morning not knowing where I was going. Right. And so with something like that, I started to realize one, the power of cleaning up my LinkedIn profile. Before I thought LinkedIn was like Facebook for business people, right? Clean that up. Go through all my contacts, people that I've known through the years and say, hey, I'm available. I'm here. I'm that. You know, put your ego aside. And I did that. And I went through probably 150 people the first day that I was out of work. So 150 people. By the Tuesday, of the next week, I had one job offer and two 
potential jobs from jobs that were not even posted anywhere. No Indeed, no LinkedIn, no you know Monster, none of that stuff. And what resonated with me is that was only two or three percent of all the work that I did. Right. So that was a lot of work right. for a small return, but you know, it, it, it only takes one. Like, and so not a, thinking that you, you know, you shouldn't apply or you don't want to apply or you don't want to do this or, or you can't do that. It's like, Hey, you know, I, I, I think it's funny. I think back to when, you know, when I was a teenager, you know, and you go to bars and you, you go around and you 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 want to chat up the the one girl you see across right, and then you're zero for one, and now you've got nothing right. This was before all this Tinder yeah, and all this other crap yeah. to meet people, mm-hmm. you know. But the guy that went up to like seventy girls, you know, all he needed was one right. So his percentages probably were a lot lower than somebody that you know is like two for ten. And he's seven for three hundred, right? But it's all it's all in relation that really it only takes one. And so, what are you going to do? And you know, that, that's so, that's so awesome crazy. you said that, that. That reference is basically you know shoot or shoot, man. Keep shooting your shot, and you know eventually one's gonna one's gonna land. And like you said, all you need is one, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, shotguns are for people with bad aim. <laughs> Right, like <laughs> I love that's what that. it's about. I love that, man. You I love know? that. So, like, I mean, man, like, how do you like keep yourself from getting dejected, though, man? Because I mean, you know, it's just like the psychology behind it. Like, obviously, like, you know, you're, dude, you're from New York. It's no secret that people from New York are tough people, man. You know, they've got thick skin. You, you can handle whatever's thrown at you. But there's people out there that also, yeah. you know, struggle that that have certain um, personality traits that make it difficult for them to face rejection. So what would you recommend to somebody in that, in that kind of phase? Yeah. Well, I, I think you have to realize, especially on the job, sometimes it's not, it, it's hardly ever personal. I mean, I can tell you probably in December, a friend of mine had called me before I was looking for a job and said, Hey, apply for this job. You can definitely do it. I know you'll like it. The pay is great. We'll get to work together again. And I was like, yeah, let's, let's go. So I applied and then he called me like a couple weeks later and he's like, dude, did you apply? And I'm like, well, yeah, I applied. He goes, all right, let me check. And then he called me again and he's like, are you sure you applied? He said, because I just got a bunch of resumes and I didn't get yours. I'm like, well, I don't know what to tell you. It turned out that there was an admin in human human resources that had a little flow chart that she was just scoring the resumes. And my resume did not score high enough by just somebody writing down on a piece of paper to go to the next level, right? So here's the person selecting, saying I'm perfect. And here's somebody just looking at a piece of paper Mm. saying, I'm not right. And what you realize at the, at the end of all of that is it's obviously never personal. Right. And and I, I kind of call it like, it's kind of funny, but I think of it like as the hotel.com theory. Right. So I'm a person and, you know, I just think I'm a person and I travel a lot and I stay at three star hotels. Okay. Now the rates are starting to go up and it's getting higher and higher. So now I am going to two star hotels. Well, the two star people now have to go to one star, right? And the one star people now they're at no star. And that happens and vice versa, right? When the rate, when rates change or, or the industry gets, gets flooded with people, Higher level people will take lower level jobs and the lower level people get pushed to lower level, to lower level, to lower level. And the next thing you know, you know, the person that's in an entry level job has 10 years of experience because we've all had to settle because of outlying pressures and to have a job, to make money, support our family. But meanwhile, we're taking those jobs 
from, you know, like just think if you're coming out of college now with the unemployment rate so high, filled with quality people that have been doing the job that you just came out of school to do for years and you're you're knocked out. You're knocked out, you know. That little HR score table is not going to push you. Yeah. Through. So 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 from what I gathered from what you just said there basically it's just like you got to find a place of acceptance and peace that it's not a personal thing when you get rejected when you don't get that job that you're like you put all this effort into getting but you just got to keep getting up you know fail fail forward just keep getting up and go if you don't get this one try again the next time try again the next time and learn from experience and just keep moving forward is that is that I mean, that's really it. You have to be tenacious. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you have to be tenacious. You know? and, and, you know, think about it like anything, right? Like, as I said before, you know, either finding a job is actually a job. Like, that's your job. Just like not making a decision is a decision. I'm not making a decision is a decision. So, you know, semantics aside, it's more about, you know, how you re- how you respond and how you react that is going to set the table for f- the future and look let's be i mean let's be honest you know there are some people unfortunately that just spiral right and they can't stop themselves and those are the people that we have to kind of throw a lifeline to mm-hmm. you know so you know friends that you haven't talked to or people that you haven't spoken to for a long time and they were big Facebook junkies, and now we're not. Those are, are now they're not. I mean, there are many signals that we know that we should look out for. And one of the things I, I can tell you is, is I am a person that will continually push out good, mm-hmm. good vibes, good feeling. You know, I'm the guy that's given big tips at the restaurant because I know what it's like for the restaurant workers. I'm the guy that is not driven around money you know I, I i mean i try to push out good karma and then it comes back i mean i'll give you an example i was selling a dining room table on offer up and the lady called me and was like you know i just bought a new house i have no furniture and blah 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 blah. and i was like okay well let's figure it out we figured it out and then i ended up giving her other furniture probably that i could have sold and but you know what it wasn't worth it because the value of what i got from her face as she loaded that furniture into her car was more than any money that I could ever get. And trust me, I wasn't, I wasn't working yet and I probably could have used it, but it didn't matter. And then the next day I got a job offer. So are they related? Probably not. You know, is it God? I, you know, I wouldn't even say maybe, you know, if you're, if you're a Catholic or, or a devout religious person, maybe it was, but I would tell you, that you know, continually pushing out good and helping people, that all comes back over and over again. I can give you a million examples <laughs> in the last year, you know, that I'm doing. And if it's vice versa, you know, I will tell you, you push out a lot of negative energy, that's exactly what you get back. Right? For every yeah. react for every so, action, there's a reaction, man. And Negative or positive. I, I, and I would go as far as to say, I, I agree with you, man. Like, you know, uh, they are connected. I, I believe that that good karma that you put out ultimately led to good karma coming back to you, man. And um, that's that's an incredible that you said that because it, it's it's crazy because I think a lot of us struggle to believe that because it, it seems so simple the way things work. But once you realize that's really the way things work, it becomes kind of like a wow, it's really that simple, huh? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it almost has to be like your mantra, right? Like if I said to you, you know, McDonald's, people start to think over 1 billion served, right? Like Burger King, have it your way. Like all of these different mantras that go with different products. I mean, if I said to you today to sit down at your desk and take a couple hours and tell me, you know, What's your mantra? What is your your personal mission statement, right? Like, what is it? Like, what is guiding you to be the person you are, make the choices you make? Like, what is your mission statement? 
you know, like Avis car rental, we try harder. Okay, well, what does that mean? That means that we're humble. We're not number one, but we just try harder, right? So, you know, I really get a lot of value out of personal mission statements because it's not even like, you know, what would Jesus do or something like that? It's here's my personal mission statement. And how does that decision align with my personal mission? Is it not good? Then I won't do it. Yeah, that That's amazing, man. Honestly. Um, and I got to be honest with you, Mike, I've known you for God, how long now, man? Like probably like 10 years or so when I, when I first started working with you over at city park, when I was a young dumbass <laughs> and uh, you know, you were the CEO of the company, man. And you know, we've come a long way and I never knew that, th- that you had this, this part of you. I always just looked at you as like, you're the big boss, man. You know what I mean? You're, you're like the, you're the chief, man. You're, you're, you're uh, you know, you're the uh, head honcho. And I've always had this like respect for you and to hear you speak about this stuff. That's, um, you know, that I'm, I'm really starting to kind of like figure out in my life as well. It's just like, it's connecting the dots so much more for me and it's like resonating so much. And I think that anybody on the other end that's listening to this episode is going to be like, damn, it's absolutely right. And I want to add, add to what you said. Like, I just want people to understand that, like, dude, it really is that simple. You put good energy out, good energy comes back one form or another. You put negative energy out, what's going to come back? It's going to boomerang right back. So, you know, choose wisely, right? And I think that when we kind of are conscious enough to kind of make those decisions in our everyday life, with every little decision we make, even in the smallest fashion, you know, I think that we set ourselves up for just a better experience of life going forward. And especially right now with this pandemic, man, I think that uh, you kind of touched on it earlier, just picking up signals from other people, like where they're at, like picking up their vibes, like because people are struggling right now. People are suffering. People are in, in really difficult situations. And I think what you did for that lady, it goes beyond just a just a dollar amount. You know, she's going to remember that forever. You know, and just just that that random random act of kindness is going to be you know, make a huge difference for her. And man, can you talk a little bit about that, man, about just like how how you kind of right. came to this understanding of like, that's how simple things really work. Well, you know, I, 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 I think a lot of it is just cultural, right? Like, so I'm from a strict Italian family where do good go to heaven, do bad, go to hell, right? I mean, it's pretty cut and dry. And as you as you look through any belief system, there's always the, the struggle of good versus evil. So if you push out good, you should get good back. And if you push out bad, you'll get bad back, right? And sometimes it's double, right? So like, let's just say for an example, you're working as a cashier in a parking lot and you're, you steal $200 and you go home with $200 in your pocket. And three days later, you get a letter from the IRS that your income tax was wrong and you owe $400, right? Like that's, and I will tell you that time and time again, you may not put it together because they will not be close when it happens, but it's not like a barter system. Do good, get good, get, do good one, get a good one back. It doesn't, it's, I don't believe it works that way, but I do believe that if you do very negative things to people, whether it's emotionally, financially, professionally, you will get back what you get, right? So I look at it like saying, okay, I always push out this good. And then I went to work one day and lost my job. So what did I do to deserve that? If that's the month, if that's the, what I follow, like, wouldn't it be that I should have been okay right but then i found that i ended up getting a different job that i actually like better with better people and so now all of a sudden it's like wait a minute this actually happening was a good thing right right like all of a sudden now what you thought was terrible you're driving home turned out to be a good thing right you know, like think about, you know, like people said, oh, I, you know, how many people got COVID 
went to the doctor and then got diagnosed for another thing that they didn't even know they had because COVID sent them to the doctor, right? Now, hey, thank God I got COVID because they saw this polyp in my lung when they checked, when they, you know, and I had cancer, like, or something. Like, you know, I'm sure that those people are out there. And, it, you know, it's how you kind of look at it. And so, you know, I try to continually put out good. Are bad things going to happen? Yeah. Yeah, they will. But, you know, some are a test, some are not. Some I'll pass. And it's more how you respond that really dictates. I agree, man. And uh, you know what? For, for me, after especially after hearing what you just said, man, you know, a lot of times we try to hold on or force situations like, you know, especially if like you feel like things are going good for you, like a job, you know, especially when it's so tied into a, a person's sense of purpose. And I think that um, especially with this pandemic for myself personally, I've learned that like it's better to just flow and just kind of like you know, surrender to what's going on, man. And you're ultimately, it's going to redirect you to something better, something that you probably didn't even think of. Like, like, I, again, I'll tell you kind of my experience. I've really been, you know, learning more about this podcast game, man, and just like really falling into it. And I, I got to tell you, I love it. I feel like I'm passionate about it. I've, I've, I've kind of discovered my true purpose, which is to, you know, um, infuse positivity in other people as much as possible, impact people, try to inspire people as much as possible. And this is a platform that offers that ability to do that. And I think that there's plenty of stories like that where people have kind of, you know, of course, kind of like this was a tough pill to swallow, like this whole pandemic of us going through that. But at the same time, like once you realize like, hey, we're going to be fine regardless, like we're going to figure this thing out. And, you know, we, us as human people, we're, we're adaptable, right? And just kind of like understanding that it's going to direct you to another place like you just touched on, like, yeah, you might have been dealing with something that you lost, but it could also be opening up the door to something better. And are you like, are you pretty excited about what's to come next? Oh, yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I've been in in the Bay Area for, my God, since 2003, I stepped off the plane and you know, I love San Francisco and I, I've embraced the weather and, you know, I have a, I have a great house. I've ha I have a great life here. And in three short weeks, I'll be starting a new life as I move outside of Dallas, Texas. And, you know, it's a whole change that, you know, uh, that I, I, I think is going to be good. Right. It's like, you know, Everything, everything, when you think about it in general, is like a moment in time, right? There's always a reference point, something throughout history that will become a point in time. So before, you know, people used to say, oh, my God, before 9-11, before 9-11, that was a point in time, right? Now that becomes a point in time. And now COVID will be, well, before COVID, our business has returned to volumes to pre-COVID levels, right? It becomes a point in time, right? So as you start to think about it, it's like, hey, as we come out of this, what, you know, what are you going to take from it? And what, how are you going to change who you were before, so to speak? Because you have an opportunity to reinvent yourself, right? Like you've been off the market for a year. So what are you doing, right? Is it a new hairstyle where, you know, all of a sudden, are you going to stop wearing Air Jordan? Or, I don't know. It could be anything. I mean, you know, but it's like, you know, when, when we come out and we're able to do these things again, it's like, you know, hey, world, like here I am now, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I took I took the pandemic to try to lose. I don't know. I lost like 40 something pounds just, you know, putting it, putting an effort in and focusing and not having <laughs> a lot of detractions that to the office brings, you know, but. It's like, hey, what are you, what are you doing? Uh, and look, honestly, you know, at, at the end of the day, I mean, there are some people that will be beyond the normal conversations like you and I are having, right? And probably need like, you know, somebody that's professionally trained in cues and stuff like that. But really, we're, we're the majority. People that don't, that can get out of their own way with a certain amount of like lifeline, so to speak. You know, this is not a a lesson in mental health, so to speak. It's more about, hey, 
you know, if you thought you were alone, you're really not. And, you know, but on the day that I lost my job, I think I had told you that there were 39 other people that lost their job that day with me. So that will bind us forever. We are like one of the 39, right? Like, you know, did I call all 39? No. Did I reach out to the ones I knew, which was about 15? Yes, because it, it binds us, right? And I think, as I mentioned, you know, the pandemic really sacrificed the social animal in all of us, kept us at home, kept us not out. And look, we're social creatures. Even if you think you're the biggest introvert in the world, you're a social creature because, you know, nine times out of 10, you're still on Facebook and Instagram and all this internet stuff, but you're just, you know, hiding, so to speak. But you're not, you know, you're not as introverted as you think. That's, that's, hey, man, that well put. Honestly, that was a, an amazing, you know, part of this conversation. And I, I picked up a lot there, man. I, I I love how you said that, you know, like one of the messages I picked up for anybody listening on the other end is that, you know, you may think you're alone, but you're not alone. You know, we're all connected somehow. We're all going through this collective challenging situation right now. Right. And for some people, it's more challenging than others. But. I feel like there's always some level of support that you could always reach out to. There's always some way to connect and, you know, um, encouraging people to do that yeah. is really important to do, especially because, you know, let's just, let's be serious. This is a really difficult time for a lot of people, myself included earlier on, as you touched on, it was really difficult for me as well to adjust. Like, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I love working for the Golden State Warriors, Mike, like, you know, that, thank you so much. You, you were the one of the person, you were the person that brought me on board and um, it's it's been such a blessing to me. And, you know, God willing, hopefully I can get back there at some point. But even if I don't, I've reached this level of contentment now, Mike, where I'm just like I'm at peace with whatever happens. And um, I've just been able to find this like gratitude. I always have a roof over my head. Uh, I've got a, a great support system. I've got mentors like you that are always looking out for me. You just texted me the other day, which is how we kind of got connected here. Right. And you know, there's always things if you look at if you look a little bit closer, there's always things that are there to help you. There's always things that are there to guide you to a better way. And, you know, I think that um, when you're going through certain things, it's easy to forget that it's easy to kind of like lose sight of that. But th this conversation can serve as that reminder to, to anybody that's listened to it. Right. For sure. I, I think, you know, we tend to lose our focus in the heat of the battle, right? You know, you see it in sports where a guy that inherently doesn't lose his cool, loses his cool, and yet another guy can keep his cool forever, right? Like, you know, you. I mean, I guess the prime example was, you know, you see Tom Brady getting an altercation with the, with the secondary guy. I'm not sure what he said or what he did, but that was un-Tom Brady-like so to speak, you know, uh, you know, it's always in the heat of battle. And so sometimes, you know, it, when you're, when you feel yourself getting into that heat of battle scenario, whether it's with a coworker or something, you need to kind of just call a, a, like a personal timeout, so to speak. And it's hard to do. Trust me, there's a number of times, you know, you're either talking to your significant other, you're talking to your boss or something where you just need to take a timeout. Right. And, you know what? Sometimes we respect you more to say, hey, look, you know what? I'm not in the right frame of mind to have a discussion like this. Let me just get a time out because I don't, you know, like the whole, I don't want to say something I'm going to regret, so to speak. But yeah, I mean, there are a lot, you know, more and more as you start to think about it, there are a lot of people that, you know, lost their jobs. There are people that kept their jobs. I mean, there's just a lot of people everywhere affected. I mean, think about this. This this era that we're in, I mean, it literally was like a, a world war, right? It was literally like World War Z. It was everywhere. And it affected everybody. And, you know, with 9-11, it, it affected a lot of people. And everybody would say back on 9-11, everybody knew somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody, right? I mean, even like our coworker at the Warriors, who's the, one of the vice presidents, I mean, his father was on the plane that crashed in Philadelphia, right? So now you know somebody who knows somebody, right? Like, and, and this is just like it. Everybody knows somebody 
who knows somebody. And in some cases, we know too many bodies, right? But it is like that. But, you know, I, I think how we, how we come out of it and how we use, you know, our time. And again, you know, I go back not to, not to beat a dead horse, but you just have to keep sending out, you know, like we said at the beginning, send out some good vibrations, uh, you know, think about some affirmations, create your own, you know, create your mission statement. Like I am this, what do you stand for? I agree, man. And, and you know what, that's something new to me, man. Just creating my own, when you were asking that, I was thinking to myself, like, you know, I have all these beliefs about myself, but have I ever written it down? And have I ever like determined like what my mission statement in life is? And, and you know, there's probably a lot of people that can't mm-hmm. answer that. And me being one of them right now, like I just realized like, but I think, you know, once we get done here, I got some homework and I'm going to probably try to look myself in the mirror and figure out, okay, how do I want to present myself in life going forward? What is going to my, be my mission going forward? And I think that, yeah. you know, if any, you know, whatever anybody picks up here in this episode, that is something I think that we can all do and, and, and just making that choice. And, you know, I, I think also like a mission statement could evolve too, right? As you kind of like, you know, move forward on your journey, you learn more, you kind of figure out what means more to you. And that, that um, mission statement could probably evolve at some point down the line. But I think it's very important to establish that mission statement. That way you have a better sense of direction. You uh, gain a better sense of control. And uh, yeah, man, I, I just think that like when you do that, you're making a conscious choice. You're owning it. And you know, you, what, you're you going to reap what you sow ultimately, right? Yep. I mean, 100%. I mean, if you Google personal mission statement, you'll see millions of different mission statements that people have had, you know, and I would say, you know, if you, if, if people are near a computer or just Google it and start to think about, you know, what is your totally. personal mission statement? You know, sometimes it's, it's, it, and it doesn't have to be a sentence. It can just be a word. It could be anything, but it's something that is going to guide you, right? It's like your compass to, to, you know, to, to perfect north or whatever they call it when they say do north, right? It's like your north star is your personal mission statement. Gotcha. And read it every day, live it, you know, and learn it and go from there. That's amazing, so there man. Go. That's amazing. And, you know, that's a, that's a cool way. I don't want to take up too much of your time, man. I don't know what the rest of your day is looking like, but, you know, this conversation has been truly amazing, man. And I definitely, you know, kind of want to, give you an opportunity, you know, is there something that you think that uh, I didn't touch on over here in, in this conversation that you feel like you wanted to share? No, I, I think, I think we, we, we kind of got what, what we wanted to get across, right? Like nobody is an island unto themselves. We're kind of all together, you know, we're in this and you see all of these, you know, things that are, are happening that kind of separate us, but you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're all the same species, right? So mm-hmm. regardless of what we believe, we're still relatively connected. So no, I, th- I think, I, I think, you know, we wanted to get the message of, Hey, you know, get out of your own way, so to speak, and be active in your own rescue and all of those little buzz terms that they have. And I, I think, you know, it, it, it's like, if one person listens or 5,000, if we're able to just help one out of the 5,000, then we did our job today. Absolutely. There you go. 1,000%. And you know what, Mike? Seriously, this has been a great conversation. I I really just appreciate it so much. I'm I'm very grateful that you were, you know, willing to lend your time to us, man. I know you got a lot of things kind of moving on in your life and, you know, you're about to embark on a brand new journey. And I I just got to tell you, man, I, uh, I can't express it enough how just grateful I am for what you've done for me individually. You know what I mean? Like I've learned so much from you indirectly and, you know, you've always trusted me and put me in positions to, you know, expand my horizons and like learn more about myself, like challenging positions, like us, us, uh, you know, planting our flag out there in Southern California, you know, uh, even, even from to the Golden State Warriors. And I, I'm just really, really grateful, man. And I just know that going forward, whoever you work with, whatever you, you, you do in your journey, you're just going to continue to help so many more people. And I got to let you know, it's just really appreciated, man. Seriously. 
Thanks. And, and, and you know, I, I would end with, you never know, you know, maybe that next call will have you come down and you'll be a Cowboy fan. <laughs> right? Like that next call to you could be like. Hey, Texas. I'll tell you right now, Mike, I'm, I'm open. I try so, to stay as open as possible, right, cool. man. But, um, hey, thank you so much for joining us, man. And, <laughs> you know, um. I'd love to have you again uh, on this on this podcast again at some point, but you know, thank you so much once again, Mike. I appreciate it.